What we're going to go over today is kind of a background of um, on solar panels and some of the components that go with solar panels. Uh, we're going to talk about leasing and financing, and then questions we should be asking our sellers, questions to ask buyers. And then I've also got some references up here for links. I'm going to hand them out and just pick them up on the way out. Okay, so when did um, solar panels first go on a home? Can anyone think it? Does anyone know or have an educated guest? Guess? <laughs> 1883, you're right. How did you know that? Yeah, it's on the slide. <laughs> uh, Charles Fritz installed the first solar array in New York City. In uh, 1839, it was observed the photovoltaic effect. It's when... Um, generation of voltage from the sun. Charles Fritz developed the first solar cell using selenium on a layer of gold to form a device giving less than 1% efficiency. Edward Weston received the patent for solar cell in 1888. Bell Labs announces in 1954 the invention of the first practical sol silicone solar cell. Uh, with about an efficiency of 6%. In 1960, Hoffman's Electronics creates a 14% efficient solar cell. In 1978 was the first solar-powered calculators. Do you remember those? <laughs> yep. 1978, before you were born. Oh, I don't even know. You had to use a Rolodex? I'm sorry, I really don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. In 1992, the University of Florida fabricates a 15.88 15.89 efficient thin film cell. And today's efficiency is less than 23%. So you can see how it's gone over the years. When I took this uh, first class and they asked, when was the first solar panels? Most everyone was thinking the 70s, maybe the 80s, but they've actually been in, around for over 100 years now. What is solar energy? It's a sustainable, renewable, and plentiful. We're getting it from the sun. Uh, Texas trails only California in solar energy production, accounting for 14% of the solar power in the U.S. And that is not only on um, homes, but also these big solar farms that are popping up. Is anyone familiar with Fort Bend County? They've put a large one out in Fort Bend County, south of Needville. Most people have heard about the net um, solar rebates. Well, Texas doesn't have those. You can get some benefits from your federal taxes when someone puts solar on their home. And you've probably also heard about net metering. Well, Texas doesn't mandate that either. Certain utility companies will. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Remember that solar panels like um, swimming pools, great selling feature, but they're not going to add a whole lot of value to your appraisal. Are you all familiar with the components, everything that goes into a solar system? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You just recently became a... Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have the solar panels, which we all see on the rooftops 
are sometimes sitting in the yard. You have the inverters, uh, which takes it to a control panel, and then you can have it onto, or the power saved onto batteries. You must be licensed in the state of Texas to install solar panels. Oh, uh, why do you ask me that? I think I have it in here. It uh, falls under the same people that do electricians. Yeah. Who license it? It's the same uh, entity that does electricians. Okay, a solar panels is a device that converts sunlight into carbon-free electricity. It's often made with silicone protected by tempered glass with an aluminum frame Typical cells consist of six. Uh, typical cells consist of six cells to make one panel. So you have the individual cells. Six of those go together, and you have the one panel you see on the roof. Uh, the panel solar panel efficiency is a percentage of the sunlight that the solar panel can convert into usable energy. Remember earlier we said it's about twenty three percent for the best ones. Correct. Y'all follow that? Photons. Photons. Physics. <laughs> the others are wasted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Monocrystine leading um, is leading in efficiency. It's about 20% and up for their efficiency. Poly, poly, polycrystalline is 15 to 17%. And CIG. CIG is the panels that are flexible. Have y'all seen those? Uh, you can buy them like to charge your telephone. They roll out, yeah. Each one of these is of course gonna be a different cost. Okay, the average panel produces about 250 to 420 kilowatts per hour. Houston's home, uh, average of 2,500 square feet, they average 1,446 kilowatt hours a month, which goes out to about 17,342 kilowatt hours. So you can see if you wanted to run your entire 2,500 square foot house off of just your solar panels, you're going to need about 20 panels to do that. That's all dependent on also where you place them. Of this link. Right. This link is on the page that I have for you. What you can do here is go in and put in your address. I used our address. Uh, average monthly bill about $300 a month, right? Yeah. Okay. So the sides will cover about 99%. Upfront costs, 52,000 without incentives for us to be able to put in a solar pan, uh, solar array on our home. And our home is 2,510 with a swimming pool. Benefits over 20 years is $85,000. And with your savings, about $33,000 in 20 years, but it would take us 13 years for our return on investment. 20 to 25 years. Well, <laughs> the older they get, the less efficient they are also. So it's all declining. If someone's asking about purchasing a uh, solar panels for their home, ask them how long they plan on staying in the home. If they're going to be there less than 10 years. They're probably not going to get the return on investment. Now, this is all considering if we were to buy it outright. Now, you can finance them. You can also have leases that we'll talk about. No. Yeah, that's the cost. And then you have to put your financing on top of it. So your origination costs, your interest costs. 
Yeah, there's a lot there. Now, a panel typically weighs about between two and four pounds per square foot. They can withstand up to one inch hail, and they're rated for a Cat 4 hurricane once they're on your roof. Operational uh, life of a panel is about 20, 20 to 35 years, depending on which product you actually purchase. Usual warranty is about 30 years on the panels. Now, there's different elements that go along with the panels. When you're thinking about um, putting panels on, the best is going to be a metal roof. Tile are absolutely the worst. Trying to drill into those tiles, they're going to break. You're going to have to replace them. South-facing panels are the best. That. Yeah, on uh, this website, it also shows you, like, here would be our south side for putting the panels on. North facing is the worst. And if there's no shade, panels are only producing electricity when the sun is hitting them. It's not the heat. It's actually the light hitting the panels, which is going to give you the um, electricity. So if it's a cloudy day, are you getting Nope. Only if you get sun hitting it. <laughs> Okay, panels need to be cleaned. People don't think about that also. We have a little bit of dust and a little bit of pollen in certain time of the year. Have y'all been out to your car and it's been yellow when it was originally white? Well, all of that, pan all that pollen is also settling onto your solar panels. So it's gonna need to be cleaned. When you're putting on solar panels, you wanna consider the age of the roof. They should be about the same age so that you're not having to, if you have a 15-year-old um, roof and you put on solar panels now, that roof is probably going to have to be replaced before those panels do. So that means you're going to have to remove the panels, replace the roof, have the panels put back on. The panels can run between three and $1,000 to remove them and then put them back on. Per panel? Or per panel. Yep, per panel. You always want to check with your homeowner's insurance to see what the coverage is on the solar panels and what is it going, how is it going to affect your roof uh, insurance also. Home warranties do not cover panels. You also do not want to pair a um, new solar array with an old HVAC system. They need to be compared so that you're going to get the best efficiency out of them. There will be a space between your roof and the panels, which is a great place for birds to take up residency. Several people I talk to have solar panels say they will have a whole flock of birds on their roof out of, getting out of the shade between their panels. So what are birds doing to your roof also? <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think I have it a little bit further, but also you want to check with your homeowners association. Now, House Bill was passed where they cannot deny solar panels, but they can have, uh, you may have to get them approved through the architectural committee. HOA. POA, yeah. So you have each panel that's up there, and then you have to have an inverter. An inverter is going to take the DC power electricity that's coming off the panels and change it to an alternating current. There's two kinds. There's a string inverters, which is one inverter for all of the panels. So it all sends the electricity, the DC here, it switches it over to AC, and then it sends it out to your house for usage or into your batteries. You can also have a micro-inverter, which is one inverter for each panel before it sends it to the home for use or to the batteries. 
A uh, string inverter is going to be the least cost. They range between $2,000 and $5,000. And they can last 10 to 15 years. But remember we said how long does the panels last? 25 to 30 years. So you're going to be replacing your inverters a lot sooner than you're going to have to replace your panels. General warranty for the inverters will run about 10 to 15 years. So once the warranty is up on those and they go out, you have to have them replaced, which you have to have if you're going to run your solar panels, you're going to be paying that cost. Do you have a question, Melanie? No, it's going to be, yeah, you're going to have the best cost when you put them on there because a lot of times you can get them, they combine everything. But once you have them to replace them, and that's only for the inverter, you've got to pay someone like an electrician that's going to have to come out and install them. The micro inverters, they cost between 15 and 6,000. And these are going to be one micro inverter per panel. They last between 15 and 25 years. Okay, with the inverters, the string inverter, they're only as good as the, they're only as efficient as the least efficient panel. So if I have panels, one of them's, all of these are running at 100%, but this one's running at 50%, they're all going to be running at 50%. So your efficiency has gone down. Now with the microinverters, if you have one that's running at 50% and the other ones are all running at 100%, you're still getting all that electricity. So the microinverter is actually gonna be a little bit better in the long run. Yeah. Is it safe to assume that because the string inverter is cheaper, that's probably <laughs> what you can sell? That would be safe to assume, yeah. Also, with the microinverter, if you have one or two panels that are in the shade, well, these panels are still going to be pushing electricity with the microinverters. With the one, it's going to be zero across the board. The string inverter, yes, it's only as efficient as the lowest, the least efficient. Micro, it doesn't matter. Each one of them are going to be sending over. I'm not sure about that. My first inclination would be, yes, if you got enough to just put them in on there. Batteries. Batteries store electricity from the solar panels. So there is backup power. Most batteries only provide backup for only a part of the home. So when you have batteries, they're also going to put in a converter where you decide where you're going to be using it. Uh, most likely your batteries are not going to run your AC because there's a big pool when your AC comes on that is going to zap those batteries. If you're running your microwave, your battery is not going to last very long. So a homeowner needs to decide what do they want. I always go back right to a hurricane. I want to have the backup power so I'm comfortable. So you may have your refrigerator running off of it and maybe one room where you can hook up a fan. Uh-huh. Um, my, my experience is, is that most people don't have a battery. Most people don't have a battery. So you should not assume that because you have solar and the power's out that you're going to have electricity. If you don't have a battery. You don't have electricity. If it's solar, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We'll get into that with the net metering. And they're probably not selling it back. They're probably getting a credit. The batteries can cost about 12000 per battery. <laughs> Mitch? 
This is Catherine online. Yes. When, pe when people talk in the room, can you please use a mic? Because there's like 17 of us on Zoom trying okay. to follow along. Thanks. Does everyone have uh, mics? Yes. Or access to one? Yes. The life of the batteries is between 5 and 15 years. You see the cost kind of building up on us. Mitch, this they is sure. have warranties. Uh, I don't know how long the warranty on the battery. I couldn't find that information. Mitch. Yes. This is Shirlene. Uh -huh. uh, at the beginning, you said the cost, the upfront cost is about 52000 Does that include the $12,000 battery? You would have to talk to whoever your the supplier is. So it could be separate? It could be separate. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Thank you. A lot of them do, do not have batteries. Tesla's come out with a battery wall, which I'm, I'm not sure what the efficiency is on those. Someone else have a question? So I'm assuming it's also transferable if you sell the no, warranty. I wouldn't assume that. Most warranties are assumable one time. So if I purchase the house, yeah, I, I purchased the house with the uh, warranty already there. When I sell it to you, that warranty is not going to transfer a second time. Now, you can purchase, when you purchase your unit, an app that monitors it. So it shows you the efficiency of your unit, how much electricity it's... Um, generating and also how much you may be back to the provider. Net metering does not, is not required in the state of Texas. It's up to the independent utility company whether or not they're going to do that. And they're not going to, people think they're going to write you a check. No, they're going to give you credit off of the electricity you use. So I'm only using, getting half of my electricity from the solar panels they're going to charge me for the other half that I'm pulling from the grid. And that changes. So you need to be constantly up with the utility provider to find out what are they offering? Has it changed? Uh -huh. They may say that they'll buy it at half of whatever the going rate is. So they'll credit you back half of whatever the going rate is. So I'm still going to have to pay for the electricity that I'm I'm using, which isn't coming from there. So the rate you get as a credit for the whatever it is that you're not, the kilowatts that you're not using. So whatever you get credit on varies month to month. You would have to look at the individual contract you have with that provider. Oh, okay. But they so can change it. So you may start out with this, and then a year later, they've changed it. So they're instead of giving you half, they're only going to give you a quarter, or maybe they give you one and a half. Got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And once you purchase the property... Mm -hmm. you're you're going to have a different provider, so it's definitely going to be different. So they would need to yeah. figure that out. And that is something as representing the buyer, you're going to have to educate them for. My understanding is that there are two types of programs, net metering and buyback. So net metering is the meter goes in one direction mm -hmm. when you are consuming from the grid, and then it goes in the opposite direction at the same rate when you are giving back to the grid. Yeah, but the grid doesn't have to accept in the state of Texas. Right, right, no. Yeah, assuming, yeah, yeah. Assuming that the utility mm -hmm. has the net metering, then it goes, you know, it's one by one, basically. One kilowatt hour. One kilowatt hour, you're going hour. back to them. Either way, or now buyback is when they have different rates, like lower rates than, okay. you know, like this. When I was up. trying to look this up, I found a lot of utilities in Austin that does it. But Reliant has a program here in Green Mountain, the ones I was able to narrow down. You have to do, buyer's going to have to do some research. Uh, 
All right, leases and financing. Uh, like we said earlier, average cost about 32,000 in the United States. It's across board. I could not find exactly what it was for Texas. Solar panels have a high upfront cost. So all the setup and design and everything you're gonna be paying up front. Um, a, uh, homeowners can use personal loans. To get it, you have to have credit for it. It's a get quick access to the cash. And there's no origination fees, and you have a fixed rate for those. Personal loan, no. HELOC, home equity loan. Uh, you must have the equity in your home to pay for it. Interest may be deductible on your taxes, your federal taxes. No origination fees and not transferable. So if they're per, if they're selling the home, that's going to have to be paid off. It's going to be a lien on the property. A lot of them have variable rates. Financing through the solar installer. Of course, you're going to have to have the credit check. Higher interest rates. There's underwriting fees. May not be assumable and will need to be paid off at closing. With all of these, if we're representing the buyer... Is the buyer going to still be able to qualify for the home if they're taking on this $35,000 payoff? Other questions you need to be asking your lenders. Solar power purchase agreement. This is basically a solar lease, a PPA. There's little to no upfront cost but you don't own the panels. You do not qualify for tax incentives. The contracts usually are between 25 and 30 years. Basically, the homeowner is becoming the supplier of the electricity. So I'm let, basically, I'm letting this company put these on my house to provide for the grid. So I don't own them. What's good about that is that they take care of the maintenance. They take care of the design. They take care of all of that while you have the units on there. And you pay a set fee. But this fee goes up on a regular basis. So right now, I may be doing really well as far as my utilities. But in two or three years, as it changes due to inflation, it may not be the same. You have to consider it. They never pay... Uh, Two to one. It's not. It's usually not going to be the same. And with this, you're going to pay a monthly fee, whether or not you use all of that power. So I'm producing X, but I'm only using Y. You're still going to pay that fee on a monthly basis. Now, if you use more than what's being produced, you're going to get a bill from that solar company that you contracted with and a bill from utility provider. So you can end up with two utility bills, basically. Now, at the end of the contract, you have a, cho a choice. You can purchase the units. Most likely, it's going to be a little less cost because they are older. Or you could say you don't want to renew it, and they're going to come and take those panels back. When they take them back, though, they don't fix your roof. So you're going to be responsible for replacing your roof at that point. If you have a lease and you have a buyer, they're going to take those off and your buyer's got however many holes in their roof they're going to have to contend with. Yes, sometimes a lease can be transferred over. Went through this really fast. Do you have any other questions about the solar power purchase agreement? You're going to have to qualify for it. It's going to be like any other fixture lease on the property. Questions for your sellers. Were the solar panels on the home when you bought the home? If they were, then 
are the warranties transferable? Were they purchased or were they leased? And this is where a lot of sellers don't know. A lot of agents don't know. Well, yeah, I'm paying monthly for it. Well, is it a lease? Is it a PPA? Or is it a loan that I have on them that has to be paid off? Even with a lease, they will put a lien on the property. Then you have another lien that's going to have to be cleared. Do they have a loan outstanding? And what's the loan payoff? We've had them as high as $65,000. The seller we had that could not sell the house because they didn't have enough equity in the home to pay off that lien. Question. Yeah. So if, oh. if you don't, um, what if there's not a lien on the house for the loan on the solar panels? Can the sale of the house go through without any addressing the solar panels and the owners, the previous owners or the sellers be responsible for the payoff of that loan? No. Or are you still the You're buyer? accepting the property as is with all warranties and deficiencies. So the buyer could be held accountable for it or that solar company could come and take those off. Basically, repossess them, take them back. Okay. Melanie? Yeah. So I have a seller I'm working with right now. Their buy off on theirs is actually 98000 So if you wanted to wow. <laughs> say it's higher than your 60 number, then. Okay. Yeah, so 98000 but they're 52000 balance on their solar panels. And um, so on their seller's disclosure, that was one of my questions is that they had marked it that they owned the panels. But, and we were debating if they needed, I know that's like a trivial part of all the things that I'm like figuring out with this, yeah. but um, on that, the, so like if I have to have that corrected because they are making a payment, but it's a loan, it's not a lien. Then it's not a it's lease. A so it's going to be a lien that has to be paid off at closing. So then is it a lease or it's not a lease? It's, it's not a lease. lease. It's owned. Then. Yeah. It okay. depends on how that contract was written up. The most likely. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing in my solar system? Is it, they're saying they owned it, they own it? Okay, you want to get a copy of their contract and is it a PPA or is it a, well then basically it's a lease. So they need to mark the lease. They need to mark that it's leased. Mm -hmm. And you need reassurance that, I'm sorry, go ahead. You, you need reassurance that that loan is going to be paid off at the sale of the property so that it doesn't stigmatize the buyer. Well, yeah, and with going through a title company, they're going to do a title search and they're going to identify that lien. Yeah. Well, and if, if you it's see... not a lien, though, if it's not a lien on the property, that's what she was saying, right? Oh, oh, it is, it a, is lien. a lien. Oh, yeah. okay. If it's like a personal loan, well, then that's yeah. going to follow them. They have to pay that personal loan off eventually. So what happens? Because I called the solar company to ask mm -hmm. uh, when the house sells. Use the mic. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> So I called the solar company. Um, they said my client sent me the contract. I've been looking it over. Called the solar company to get some clarification on what happens when we sell the house, and they basically told me that it would transfer over to the new owner. That the new owner would call them, and they would go through the whole process of switching everything over to them. Is how I understood. That okay. They with that though that new own that new buyer is going to have to accept it they're going to have to qualify with their lender and they're going to have to qualify with that provider also okay and then if that doesn't happen then what <laughs> either they're not purchasing the home the seller's going to have to pay it off and have them or have them removed and probably replace the roof yeah <laughs> yeah yeah how much do they owe or how long is the lease? For? And they got it in 2019. Ooh, about yeah. five years. Yeah. And how long is it for? Uh, I think it's 25. 25 years? Yeah. Yeah. So I had I had a buyer last towards the end of last year. Um, it was an open door listing mm -hmm. and they paid thirty four thousand to Tesla, but it's a lease. And we have, or my client has 17 years left, but wow. it's, it's a lease that was paid off so we could get into, because my clients were not going to pick up the, the payments. So oh, okay. So open door paid Tesla mm -hmm. 
but we it's a lease so they are aware that you know when that time comes they, they don't own those panels right they anything, either purchase it at that go. time now we didn't know about the yeah maintenance and expenses and well if it's stuff. a lease most likely whoever they're leasing it from is going to be taking care of it Actually, you're right. The, they take mm -hmm. care of all the maintenance. I read okay. that on, on their contract. You're right. Yeah. It was a, yeah. And you'd want to look at it to see, do they, um, I want to say prorate when they take off so much because of the age of it. What's that word I'm looking for? Depreciate. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Depreciate the uh, panels. That's another question you need to ask. And did they realize that at 17 years, if they don't purchase it, they're going to come take those. Yeah. The owner did. Basically, the owner. Yes, sir. So my situation, I represent the seller. Their payoff is 85000 So we'll go <laughs> home. So their payoff is 85000 He works for the solar company. That put it in and he's telling me and i've looked at a ton of paperwork but he's telling me that basic it's financed mm -hmm. and that when the property sells it's a non-secured loan and that the new homeowner the buyer that the company is has agreed they will automatically it doesn't matter what their credit's like they will go ahead and take them on Okay. And so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. I don't know how to disclose all of that. I mean, I've written it. I mean, I haven't. He's written it as much as I can get him to write in the seller's disclosure and all of that. And then I have a ton of stuff I share with people that look at the property. But my, I guess my question is twofold. One is, is there anything in your presentation that helps us convey all of this information to the other side? in a positive way that helps it sell the dang house. <laughs> and then the second one is, you know, what is our, I mean, obviously we've got responsibility here, I get. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, is there any guidance on that part as well, as far as these are the specific documents you need to share with them from the finance company or from the, because right now I'm just coming up with stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I don't really have that, but it's something I could do a little bit of research on. It's a material fact, we're gonna have to share and of course, the lender is going to have to be involved because they're taking on an, another debt. Well, that's what I was going to say is that um, oh. the contract that I looked at for my clients, um, their payment is two thirty one right now, mm -hmm. but it's a twenty year note. So in the next by the tenth year, it actually goes up to four hundred dollars. So like it's an up. So like when somebody's going to qualify for that, I I know I used to be a lender, so like they're going to look at the worst case of that number whatever that 20 year number is up. I'm not even sure what that is. So for your, the person buying it, that's the number that they'll look at, which makes a big difference. And then the other thing in their contract is that that $98,000 is if they would have paid that, because my sellers, they already bought another house, so they're like desperate right now, <laughs> but um, yeah. And so they were talking about paying that 98,000 off, but if they paid the full buyout of it, then it voids all warranties and maintenance agreements that has on the panels, because that $98,000 is the course of the time, the maintenance that they expect it to be on oh, those channels. So that's in the contract? Yeah, so the panels were 52, the buyout is 98 to cover the 20 years of maintenance that they're paying up front, so the next person won't get that. Oh, wow, that's something new. Yeah. But, uh, what? <laughs> Okay. Mitch. Yes, sir. The more we talk about this, the more I, it sounds like solar panels are a scam <laughs> because, you know, when we improve our houses and our properties, like we build have a, a winner, we have a winner <laughs> to, to, to put in a pool. I mean, that's usually paid off. I mean, people pay cash yeah. for that or people, and that's not a problem mm -hmm. for the buyer that's buying the new, the pro their property. But solar panels, there are all kinds of situations, loans, leases, all kinds of situations that can get them into trouble. And I'm I'm like going, unless the builder that built the house originally put in solar panels like an electrical system. Right. You yeah. know, it's it, it, it run away from that situation, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Right. That battery dies, you're no longer you're getting Whatever's happening today, 
it's generating electricity for. I have a question. Can't you just take your panels with you? The well, you, you, with you, if you own them, you can. Yeah, but most so nobody I'm owes saying, them. I'm like, if I mean, essentially, if you still want to keep them, like you can take them with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, then you're going to get into having to pay someone to come out and take it all apart. I said earlier about um, three to a thousand dollars to take them apart, and then you're going to have to do something with the roof. So as a buyer's agent, make sure you're writing that into the contract. Because I've got a great little listing in Katy. If anybody wants to look at something. <laughs> Are the panels paid off? <laughs> okay. He's having a show in on Friday. He's having a show in on Friday. Get a copy of the lease of the contract when you're taking the listing so you know what's going on with it and review it as much as you can. We're not lawyers, so you're going to recommend that buyers get it reviewed by a lawyer. Oh, what is the name of the company they purchased or leased from? You want to make sure that they're still in business. And there's like three companies that have been in business for the longest and a lot of these little ones that fly by night. We had someone show up at the house wanting to sell us solar panels. Snow upfront cost, and well, what happens when I go to sell it? You just transfer it to the other people. Well, yeah, that's only if X, Y, Z. Uh, if they purchased, asking if they purchased batteries, how many batteries do they have? What's the storage capacity of those batteries? How old are those batteries? Asking which direction are the panels. And if you're buying a house and they're south, uh, south fa north facing, you're not going to get the efficiency. And if you're in up in the woodlands when there's a thousand trees, what's the shade like? If they're already 10 years old, the efficiency has already gone down on those. And do they have an app to monitor the status? What's the age of the panels? What's the age of the inverters? What's the age of the uh, batteries? What's the age of the roof? Is this already a 20-year roof with five-year uh, solar panels on them? And what's the size of the system? You can get all of that from the information, or here's a little worksheet that's provided so you can actually plug in your numbers to find out what the efficiency is on the unit. It's one of the links I have. Mm -hmm. Did everyone get the links? Okay, thank you. Thank you to my assistant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's been the production on it? What is it right now? And then what type of savings is that homeowner seeing on the property, on the electric bills, utility bills? Any other questions for your thinking about sellers? Yes, sir. So all of these things that you just listed, there's really no standard quite yet as to what we're, I know I just asked the same question. Yeah. There's no standard of what we're providing to the other side. Not at the really, moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's my next project after doing this class and getting the questions. What can we, a form maybe we can develop that'll have the questions you can hand to a seller and get these answers and, and I don't know if, you know, when I called the company to try to get as much information from them as possible, I kept being told, we'll just have them call us. We'll just have them call us. There was nothing that they would send me so that I could include in the documentation when I'm, you know, for my listing, that they weren't, they weren't really offering anything. They just kept saying, we'll just give them my number and they'll have them call us. And so I don't know if y'all are getting similar, those of you that have yeah. a, a listing like that. Yeah. I find that with... Um... Security systems also, you call them, they want they want to sell a product. All right, questions for your buyer. Uh, buyer to be asking for the seller. Is there a lien on the property? Is it a lease? Is it a PPA? Even with those, like I said, they could be filed. You're going to want to talk to your title company, maybe opening title to... Uh, 
with your with the seller opening title early to do a research. Are the panels owned or are they leased? What's the payoff? If it's a lease or a PPA, is it written up so that it is even assumable? Are they going to have to pay it off like y'all have had? Um, what are the monthly payments? Is there an escalation to the payments? I'm going to add that. Uh, what type of savings are they seeing? Do they have an assumable loan? What company installed it? What company is doing the maintenance? Or are they still even in business? Uh, what's the warranty? How long have they had it? How long is the warranty for? Is the warranty transferable? If, it's, it's, if they've already transferred it once, most likely it's not. Uh, what were, uh, were ba batteries purchased? I should add on here what type of battery because that makes a difference on the efficiency. How many uh, of those batteries, what is linked to the batteries when the, pro when the electricity does go out? Am I only going to be able to run my TV or am I going to be able to run the refrigerator and a fan? Mm -hmm. Mike. Mm -hmm. um, so if your seller was, when they set it up, they focused on say their HVAC and then the buyer um, wants to focus on the refrigerator in the one room with the fan. Mm -hmm. Can they make that change? They would have to talk to an electrician. I'm surprised that the HVAC would even be hooked up to it. Sure. With batteries, um, what I was reading is there's such a large draw when the AC comes on that it'll zap your batteries. So maybe you could run the HVAC, but for 30 minutes. But regardless of, regardless of appliance, is it like, say it's, they want to, you said not microwave, washer and dryer. They want to wash their own dryer and the other person wants the refrigerator. You said just an electrician to maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you'd find out if you're the buyer, find out what is hooked up to it at the moment. And like Carrie said, there may not even be batteries. They're just getting whatever's there. Now with um, like when we have uh, power outages, if there's sun out, we're still going to be generating that electricity. It's to be going to your home to run those products. No, no. Oh, no, it won't work. It, it, the power company has to be up and running. That's right. That's reason. only if you have the why. battery. Yeah. Buy a generator. So if the power is out, there's no electricity and you have solar panels and you don't have a battery, you don't have power either. Unless you have a generator, right? I mean. Oh, if you have a battery, it's different. Yes. Yeah. Excuse if me. you yeah. don't, then yeah, you're no right. Battery, it's just no battery. Yeah. It goes through the power grid. Hmm? I know for a buyer. Um, how old are the panels? How old are the inverters? How old are the batteries? How old's the roof? How old is the HVAC system? What direction do the panels face? You're going to be wanting to look also when you're walking the property, what type of shade is on there? What type of shade throughout the day? Check with the buyer's home insurance to see what type of coverage is going to be available. How is it going to affect the coverage on their roof? And I think from what both of the butts have learned, home insurance is going to cover the roof anyway. Mitch, what about inspectors? Are they do inspectors they do not inspect solar panels? Okay. They nope. will not be able to report on those. Nope. So you have to get somebody out there that's a specialist. Yeah, and I don't I don't even know if there is one. Is there a chimney guy? A solar, I don't, I don't know. They have them come out and check it. They might. <laughs> Does the seller have an app that monitors this? Paragraph two says that that app will be transferred at closing. Get a copy of the contract and the lease agreement, maybe even before you go under contract or make an offer on the property. Is there a warranty? 
did they um, purchase an extended warranty? You can't get an extended warranty on the inverters and on the batteries. It's going to cost you. Ask if the warranty and lease are transferable when they sell the home. So I'm purchasing it now with all of these. When I go to sell it in five years, am I going to be able to transfer it again? Get the HOA docs and the resale certificate. Make sure that they did go through the proper channels to put these on the house. Can't be denied, but they can architectural review. If the system is going to be removed, make sure you write into the contract what's going to happen with the roof. End of last year, we had a buyer walk into the house after closing, and they had taken the ceiling fan, which was an exclusion, but there was just wires hanging there. So nothing was written to replace it. The um, copy of the contract as a listing agent. For the copy of the contract as a listing agent, do I provide that? Or do they have to call the company to get that? I'd say best practice, you should provide it. Okay. That's you know, not, the seller's going to want to know it also. But if it has like specific information, like... Mm -hmm. Like we do with um, proof of funds, maybe black out okay. that information. Okay. Yes. Sorry. This is Mike. Just off the topic, just on what you just said on that exclusion, I would assume if the seller, I mean, I haven't had the situation, but I'm glad you mentioned mm -hmm. it. So if the seller's taking that ceiling fan or lighting, I I would assume that they would replace it with something else. So you're saying that if I didn't write that on the contract, they just can leave the wires out? Don't assume. Correct. There's nothing in the contract that says that if that there's an exclusion that they have to replace it. Yeah. So I have to write. Okay. Uh -huh. Learn something new. And with those exclusions, when you're writing it, make sure you write what the buyer wants because I don't want someone going down to Home Depot and buying the $20 fan to put in the living room to replace that couple of hundred dollar one. On the seller's disclosure, section one, uh, top of page two, you have solar panels. Are they owned or leased and from whom on here? As um, listing agents, make sure you look at the seller's disclosure because there's solar panels, water heater, not water heater, solar panels, water softener, Security system, satellite dish that say owned or leased. If they've marked them as leased, ask questions. There's only one security system I've run into, and it's Vivid, that is truly leased, where they're going to come take the everything. A lot of times a seller will put leased for a security system when they're paying for monitoring. So they actually own the system. They're just paying for monitoring. So ask the questions, get the answers. Paragraph four of the contract talks about fixture leases. It's at least uh, solar panels. You're going to have to check paragraph 4B and attach the TXR 1954. This is a newer form, what, about a year, year and a half. So what type of lease is it? At closing, buyer shall assume and seller shall assign to buyer the following fixture leases, solar panels, Buyer shall pay first blank of any necessary uh, to assume the loan or the lease. Or prior to closing, seller will or will not remove the lease fixture. Delivery of fixture leases, either they received it or they have seven days to get it to them. The buyer still has an out once they receive those leases. Now, this is going to be attached to your contract, so your lender is going to see it also. These are the different uh, resources. Renewable energy explained. That was the extra sheet I added at the last minute. Renewable energy explained with the portfolio standards from the state. This is from the U.S. You can uh, send me an um, email 
and I will share. It's on my drive. Okay. Database for uh, state incentives, solar energy in, in industry associations. This is the Google Project Sunroof. This is what I showed earlier when I pulled up our property. You can pull up exactly what it's going on. Oh, let's see. With us, it says we get 1,600 hours of usable sunlight per year. Hmm. And they've even calculated there's 2,536 square feet available for solar panels. Hmm. I don't know. At, since you have to have it on the north side, south side. Okay. It's available. It doesn't mean it's going to be efficient, but you could put them on here. <laughs> Good point. Uh, Texas Solar Guys, they will remove or reinstall your solar panels for you. I did not check them out to see how much they cost. Something we could do. This is uh, Institute Appraisal Report. Port and a, where you can get certain inspectors that'll come out and appraise the home for green energy. With that, then you can attach this when you're selling the property also. But you have to find someone who is certified to do it. I wasn't even aware of this, but it may be a good selling feature. And I, I can't tell you what the cost is. Hey, this class didn't take as long as I expected it to. What was that that you just said? Maybe a good selling feature. Can you to have the home assessed for their green? How green are they? Yeah. Energy star rating. Would that add value? I doubt if it would add value, but it'd be a good selling feature. <laughs> I've been that uh, it doesn't add value, but then an appraiser we talked to, she said she would add a little bit of value depending on the solar systems and what type of, um, and they're getting on their investment. Oh, did you, I'm sorry. I said, like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, one thing, I've got two more listings coming up. <laughs> so if anybody that's doing a listing and they have solar, if y'all want to get together and we kind of talk about what's a good way to present this, I yeah. would love to get your feedback. And I would like to as well. be at that also, please. All right, you bet. Yeah. So just get with me after. So. Seems like there's a lot of new stuff coming out with solar panels. I don't know about y'all. It's the first time I've really seen it and how many years I've had my license. Any questions? Oh. I can share that just like taking off their information so that you can see. Because what it is is it shows the kilowatts that they get credited back. So okay. like, um, they were using like 850 kilowatts a month just the way that their house was. But like stand, that's a lot higher than what people typically use. Mm -hmm. So it took it was taking them. They just got them installed in December. So Ooh. I don't. Ouch. Um. So they haven't built up a lot because we've had a lot of storms and stuff. But then coming into now, since they haven't lived there, they've been getting credits back from those solar panels being there and the house being vacant. So mm. they're now paying instead of having a month. They have their two thirty one payment and they're paying eighty dollars at their house for it running. But like if somebody was living there, I mean the the, the savings is there. Um, you can see it, but it just you know. How much were they paying before they had the solar panels? Well, last summer the reason they got the panels is they had their bills were around eight hundred dollars because they both work from home. The kids okay. have like workstations and they had four big dogs in and out. So, so were they actually saving money when they were still living there? Yeah. So when they were living bit? there, their payments went up to on a, their utility bill was one hundred and fifty dollars at the most. Okay. Uh, but before that, last summer really was their catalyst for the solar panels because I think it was August was eight hundred dollars. So the two thirty one and the maybe two hundred dollar payment is what they were quoted that there would be a potential. They're saving about half. Yeah. About four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, and at the time they didn't know that they were going to be leaving their house because 
All right. If you have any questions, email me because I will do the research and I'll add it to this. All right. Thanks for your time. <laughs>